Well, today's state of play came and went, and although it seems a lot of the event was leaked prior, I was not locked in enough to have my real-time disappointment spoiled beforehand, fortunately enough. The bar of a state of play tends to be lodged firmly in the center of the Earth's crust, and this event was largely no exception, but I did come out feeling it was worth discussing a bit nonetheless. I will only be touching upon a few personal highlights I found, and likely devoting 15 minutes solely to Concord's Bad Fur Day, if only because it felt somewhat captivating for the five hours it took them to quip their way to the part where the biggest punchline of the game actually being a 5v5 PvP FPS, which in turn served as a reminder that your investment in anything will always remain conditional and your hopes and dreams are the devil's playthings. Comedy gold, Sony. Absolute knee slapper. So, why did I still find it interesting? Well, from the typical brand of pre-rendered quirky ragtag Marvel cannon fodder likes that inhabit every single one of these artificially soulless cash grabs, I must say I somewhat resonated with the delivery by the cast here. There was a certain... sauce to the progression. The quips at play weren't as punchable as usual, and although it does still follow the tried series of ever-escalating ass pulls to undeservedly portray all the characters as interchangeable badasses in their own respect, the pacing itself wasn't awful. Even though the initial interactions were a bit stiff, there was some honest-to-god chemistry between the characters at some point, which I, I do feel should be the bare minimum. But once again, when the bar of expectation aimed towards your average state of play could only be dislodged by King Arthur himself, you take every small victory you can get. It's just a shame, then, that the gameplay itself looks fiercely underwhelming, and the only potential saving graces in some respect was a brief mention of lore expansion over time, which I hope isn't three loosely connected pre-rendered cutscenes post-launch, but rather something with a firmer connective tissue, because for a change, I actually felt this world could be worth exploring if executed well, even at the sacrifice of subjecting myself to a genre I'm not particularly fond of. I didn't hate the art direction, although a lot of parts visually gave the PS4 port of High on Life, and trust me, if I name drop that game in the mirror with dimly lit candles, Justin Roiland will surely emerge in the mist of condensation donning the OJ gloves to date even this game by the same degree of hindsight, so I'm not going to jinx my light favor for this by using that comparison point as a firm base here. Moving on, there was also the PvP Spider-Man and the two seconds of the Venom gameplay, of which both the movement and combat implementation loosely reminded me of Ultimate Spider-Man, and that I would much rather be playing that than watching the rest of the gameplay footage. That's it. That's the extensive breakdown. I hope you're sold, because I'm not. Good rinse. Then there was the standard fair prior exclusive gets the PC port treatment in the form of God of War of Valhalla. And I have to say... I always feel somewhat mixed about these reveals. Not to say I ultimately support the blind, gatekeeping fanboy mentality where your favorite console comprises your entire personality, and you name your firstborn child in honor of Jim Ryan because it was only fitting after he impregnated your wife, but at the same time I can't help but feel there's a strange, unfamiliar core sensation that wells up within me that feels like experiencing one of these games on non-Sony-based architecture feels kind of weird. I understand this is the direction a lot of larger companies are taking these days, and that console exclusivity is starting to fade in light of having your heavy hitters be as accessible as possible to the masses, but at the same time, playing some of Sony's most iconic outings on Steam or whatever, that just takes a bit of the luster away from feeling like my console has a unique sense of identity. And I know, I, I realize that's probably a strange hang-up to have, but I often find myself likening different hardware to its software in an almost amalgamatory sense, and with this, I feel like a lot of the recent years have been lacking that liveliness factor in the same way. From its presentation to its games, unlike myself, I feel like a console takes on its own life. Oh, and as far as God of War goes, we've basically been watching reboot Kratos battle parental neglect and have it take center stage since man first invented the wheel, so I'm not really into the franchise as a whole, and even so, I feel the wow factor is kind of lost on me anyways given how frequently we've been exposed to both games over the years. Somewhere between the micro-sleep I got between reveals, Infinity Nikki also caught my eye, although I'm not sure if it's because I'd never allow myself to fall asleep in the presence of any of these characters. They're going for this cutesy, vibrant, photorealistic aesthetic that in turn both captivates and repels me at the same time. 
I can't really tell how I feel yet, but when I see what I believe were actual platforming elements amidst whatever else was happening here come to play in my PvP showcase, I think the benefit of the doubt is worth it, even if the price I end up paying is in the form of long-term gotcha ensnarement and quite possibly the second half of Coraline. On top of this, we were given a casual reminder that PSVR 2 does indeed still exist in the form of Skydance's Behemoth, which, judging from the footage at least, strikes me as what would happen if the Blendtec guy threw Skyrim, Chivalry, and Infinity Blade into a blender. It still has that mobile game tech demo look that doesn't really promise much staying power alongside VR games taking similar approaches. The footage, however, didn't give a whole lot to work with, so I do hope I'm wrong on this end, as I'm always hoping to see more breakout titles in the medium, because God only knows we need them, as much as I need a reason to buy the PSVR 2 itself. And speaking of that identity factor I mentioned earlier, what better seg to our final reveal than to discuss the, uh, final reveal, which was Astrobot. At this point, we're really doubling down on making distinction between the titles of the entries of the franchise as chronologically convoluted for everyone as possible. And to some degree, I respect that commitment to franchise and accessibility, given how scattered the games themselves are across platforms, and the fact that this is... kind of the point. Not only does the Astrobot franchise strike me as a spiritual successor to the soul found in Little Big Planet back in the day, each entry also serves as a celebratory footnote to mark the progression of both Sony's hardware and its most iconic IPs over the years. It proudly wears this on its sleeve, but it doesn't feel disingenuous while hyping you up with what mainly condensed to its most basic form could be likened to a mere PowerPoint presentation of Sony's flexes over the years. Each entry bolsters captivating level design, worlds worth exploring filled to the brim with little sprinkles of wonder that rewards the player the more they kept up to speed with the various eras and truly makes them feel like they're part of that equation. It understands the assignment of how core memories are instilled in gamers over the years and readily takes advantage of this in very memorable and creative means, which in my opinion makes it feel like it's remnant of time past as it chronicles time passing as a whole, if that analogy makes sense. Notice I have said absolutely fuck all about this game, because I have very little doubt in my mind that this entry will be any exception. And I'm glad that Sony gave it the spotlight and attention it deserves, in light of the void that Media Molecule has left us.